Okay, uh, Artie, here, come here. Hmm? Listen, if we've got a straight shot, then this is probably as good a time as any. Uh, give me your trident. Why? Artie. Artie, just do it. Okay, fine. Great, then, uh, Jillian is gonna take his weapon and cast Holy Weapon on that. No, you wanna do that to my glaive. How long does Holy Weapon last? You may wanna wait until right before you it guys are up there. It lasts an hour. Oh, you okay, wanna... then, yeah, do it. Okay, but that's on my glaive, because that's and my magical weapon. And it turns it into weapon. a magic weapon. Oh, okay. Well, the glaive is still technically better. <laughs> okay, whatever. Just give me whatever weapon you want to use against this vampire. Okay. He hands you and the glaive. don't make it your dick. <laughs> <laughs> he hands you his dick. <laughs> uh, it's cold. <laughs> You're cold. <laughs> I know. Uh, no, he hands you- so, what does it do to a plus one glaive? Uh, let me just pull up the description here. You imbue a weapon you touch with holy power. Until the spell ends, the weapon emits bright light in a 30-foot radius, dim light additional 30 feet. In addition, weapon attacks made with it deal an extra 2d8 radiant damage on a hit. If the weapon is not already a magic weapon, it becomes one for the duration. Uh... I do have a fail safe where I can trigger where where I can basically dispel it with a radiance explosion um, as a bonus action on my turn that would do uh, radiant damage and blinding if it if it succeeds a con save. But what Artie needs to know is that it deals bonus radiant damage and it is now a magic weapon if it was not before. Cool. Plus two d eight radiant damage. Got it. Yes. And it might explode. <laughs> And maybe I explode? might explode it. It will not hurt you. <laughs> Artie gets a sunburn. What, you, what color do you do, do you have? Purple? Purple. He goes mm-hmm. purple. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I I fucked up real bad last time we tried to fight this this vampire. So I'm just gonna try to spread everything around. Uh, Elviva, you probably want to take. I don't know, like, all of the holy water we've gotten there? Because they're idiots and they didn't confiscate that? Oh, yeah. What do I do? Just toss it at them? Spritz it? How can you get- how, like, how much can you dunk your arrows into it? Uh, you would need holy oil for that, but you, okay. you can use holy water as a grenade, basically. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cacophony, hmm? Jillianna digs in her bag. Uh, hands her a platinum ring. Hold on to that. Put that on. Okay. She casually slips it on. Good. Do we know how many holy waters that is? Uh, I believe we had one bottle before, and then, uh... You made some, right? Yes, and then I made two more, uh, when you were making those six wooden stakes that you have. Oh yeah, I do have a bunch of wooden stakes. Mm-hmm. I'll be right back, Cacophony says, disappearing into a cell. <laughs> is this Mackenzie walking away from the- from- what's happening? Uh, just- just give it a minute. It's okay. Okay. Okay, so you've got so you've got those stakes and that holy water. You're the one that I can't do much to protect, so you might want to work on these things. Yeah, I've been Alviva's just been like staring at the wall looking really in deep concentration. And it's like, yes. Thought about all the magic shit that I know. <laughs> There's a clack of the heel and then Cacophony steps back out in a new costume. Excellent. She's wearing it's she's got like you're dressed a, like Van Helsing, aren't you? Oh uh, no, 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 oh, no, no, dressed like the girl. <laughs> Anna, dressed like Anna. 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 Your your dress is Kate Beckinsale and Van Helsing. Yes, Please. she is dressed <laughs> like Kate Beckinsale and Van Helsing. Oh, do you want to give us the full description then, just for the full effect? <laughs> so she steps back out, and she's wearing like a corset with like a white low cut boobage, so you can see a ton of cleavage, of course, and like a weird little like black bandero vest. Uh, that goes down and highlights everything, and then, like, skin tight, she definitely poured these on leather pants. Excellent. And high-heeled And high-heeled boots. boots. And her hair's all down and, like, perfectly curled down her shoulders. Perfect. Can you do that for me? I want to look like Van Helsing. <laughs> okay. Uh, come back here, Alviva. Come on. <laughs> oh my god. 
Elvira runs into the cell. <laughs> okay. uh, Cacophony steps in with her and there's some magic casting. And sorry, Elviva, it is a little bit like sexy Van Helsing, but she, she tries to tone it down a little bit. Cacophony has one setting. <laughs> yeah. There's there's definitely a little bit of a gap, a gap where there would be room for a whole bunch of titty, but Elviva doesn't really have that. Yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah, like his turtleneck is just gone, but she does at least have the leather and the, all the leather and like the skin tight pants and the hat. Yeah. Big cloak, big hat. The yeah, hat's cool important. bandana. And then, yeah, weirdly, like, <laughs> boot window style. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'll, I'll take it. But because there's not really boob there, it's very androgynous. <laughs> yeah. Which is also a look. Yeah. I mean, sexy Van Helsing is already just Van Helsing. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> also, even though my hair is red, I, I think I will totally get uh, Hugh Jackman's perfect hair extensions. <laughs> nice and wavy. <laughs> so soft. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Countess Argyle says, well, if we're all done with our wardrobe changes. Yes. Uh, are all the other cells empty? I did want to check that. We yes, the, break all the other else. cells are empty. As you could saw as you were running down the hall. Uh, okay, and good. you take a moment to appreciate the psychological warfare and the fact that the toilets are right in front of the doors. <laughs> <laughs> Should blast them all for fun. I'm going to break all their toilets. No. <laughs> no, we've got to go. You're just going to do that to the next person who has to be in this prison? Yes. <laughs> I'll be the, you can do that after, we're, after we've killed a vampire or I'll die. Okay. When, if we all die, you can go down and break the toilets. Yes. I break one toilet and you can't stop me. You already broke a toilet. Yeah, this is an extra one. Now it's symmetrical. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and with that ring from Kakafi, I'm going to activate Warding Bond. So Ooh. that is also now active. That is going to, uh, basically she, Cacophony gets plus one to AC and saving throws and resistance to all damage. The downside of that is that every time she takes damage, so do I. Okay. Fun. Yeah, I have a spell I'm going to cast, but it only lasts for a minute. So I'm going to wait until we're... Right yeah, close. both of those last an hour. And oh, this is a touch spell, so I'm just going to go ahead and say that, like, when Juliana gives that ring to Cacophony, she, like, holds her hand and, and gives it to her. Aww. <laughs> Aww. Uh, Cacophony, of course, makes sure to say, this is very romantic, Jill. Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> Don't die. I will do my best. Because Jill has to wear the other ring, too. We're married. We're, we're kind of married for the duration of the spell. <laughs> but I didn't cast ceremony. Uh, one, hey, hey, Alexia, remember we did Tomb of Horrors and all got married beforehand? <laughs> yeah, I was just remembering that. of like, okay, everybody, marry each other before we go into the Tomb of Horrors for that <laughs> sweet, sweet ceremony bonus. Yeah. There was no upper limit on how many people could get married in the ceremony spell. <laughs> no. It's how you kick off every hard dungeon is marry each other. <laughs> That's beautiful. All right, so uh, you guys are headed upstairs? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so you start by heading up to uh, the ground floor. You end up in the common room of the barracks. You may need to... Do we need to Do we need to place ourselves? Not, no, not for the ground oh. floor. There's nothing okay. down here of interest, although you do note that there is a warforge standing by the door guarding it. How are things up here? Managing. Where are the others? Out and about. The others are guarding the other two doors to the barracks. All right. So long as everybody's here. All present and accounted for. Uh, and you guys uh, head up to the second floor. <laughs> 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 We're not going to have you talk to yourselves because that would be weird. Mm -hmm. Oh, what? Oh, it would be <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I said, do you want Greg to be here? And you said, yes, it was your choice <laughs> to have to play two characters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you talk to yourself all the time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, so you're up to the second floor of the barracks. This appears to be the dormitory. There are a lot of beds around, a lot of storage chats, uh, a half-finished card game on the table that appears to have been interrupted with everything caught fire. Oh, that was a bad hand. <laughs> anything you want to investigate on this floor, you're going straight up to the third. Uh, I say we, we skip and just go up. I'm just going to do a quick perception check to see if there is literally anything that means that we should tarry and open every chest. Sure, you can roll for GM. Do that. <laughs> That's a nine. Don't know. 
there's some spears up against the wall that looks like they were left there when the guy sat down to the card game and then left when everything caught fire. Would Greg have noticed this? Greg, yeah. Just a passive wisdom is 11. Yeah, Greg kind of slows down and it's like, ah, I'll be right back. <laughs> and lights all the torch, all the, all the spears on fire. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. You're just gonna... You're just gonna set these these spears on fire up against the wall of the barracks of the building you're in. All right, he'll just break them, okay? <laughs> okay. Just throw them out the window. Throw them out the window. No. Yeah, there are then... some windows nearby. You can check them out the window. No, because then they'll see. <laughs> but setting them on fire is less conspicuous. I mean, you could throw them downstairs until Grab to burn them or something. <laughs> he throws them downstairs. Well, um. Eat this! <laughs> uh, from downstairs, there's the sound of... <laughs> Less than ten seconds, baby. I don't know what that means, just eat it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't have that sound clip, does it? Okay. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to do before you make your way up to the third floor? My positive perception is 60 and... Do I notice anything interesting? It's a couple of bows under some beds nearby. Yeah, they're probably not as good as my bow. These guys aren't supposed to store their weapons under the bed. That doesn't mean they listen. <laughs> yeah. I think we're good. Though, uh, so do we expect that when we open this door, we are going to be face to face with the vampire? Countess Tor uh, Countess Aguilar pops us. Uh, from what I understand of the plans of the building, yes, as soon as we ascend those stairs, we're in the middle of uh, the guard captain's office, which if she's anywhere, it's probably there. Great. I'll take the lead. Everybody ready for a boss fight? Yeah. <sighs> I cast mirror image. <laughs> <laughs> now? Yeah. Before the boss fight. <laughs> That's How only one minute. Last? One minute. One, one minute. minute. Okay. <laughs> so I guess you're going up right now. Oh well, yeah, it's like when we're when we're ready to open the door. You want to do it like as we're running up the stairs, basically. I run up the stairs and I become four of me running upstairs. <laughs> okay, room gets real crowded. So you guys uh, bust your way up the stairs uh, and end up in a very large room. Uh, this is the guard captain's office, and you're guessing that, uh, judging by the side of this room, uh, he has the ability to pull in the entire guard to chew them out if necessary. It's <laughs> gigantic. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you guys end up, you guys get up there and you look around and then you spot the guard captain's desk and sitting behind the guard captain's desk, reading one of his books, is Countess Torn and Casa. Well, Artie comes in first. Okay. Artie. I don't trust that rug. Artie's first. <laughs> Never okay. Never trust the rug. Never trust the rug. Okay. <laughs> Tornagasa looks up, sees you, uh, does not move to attack you immediately, but does seem interested in your presence. She's doing the cool, aloof vampire shit. Yeah, Artie already knows she's a vampire. He's gonna go ahead and use his cannon arm. No, no, no! <laughs> no, Artie, no! Artie, Artie yes. that guy might be willing to talk to us for half a second. No! Nah. You guys said you wanted a bad guy who would talk to you. Artie, no! Do not! Artie's, like, raising his arm. No! <laughs> <laughs> what? The, but the bad guy. The, the yeah, the, the tank top, also known as the anti-villain monologue generator. <laughs> <laughs> anti-villain monologue. No more an no more villain monologues for this character. There's <laughs> use a cannon. So we're done here, gun. <laughs> so it's the, done. No, I don't want to hear the monologue. We're button. done, gun. Artie, we don't even know if she's a part of the cult or not. But she's she's bad. We know yes. this. Yes, she is bad. Clearly she is bad. She has definitely almost killed us several times. Excuse me, lady vampire. Can you resolve this so we stop arguing? Are you here to murder us or do you want to talk? Two things can be true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ya well. ves, quiere matarnos. Let me, let me shoot her. Not yet. Fine then, do your talking. Alexi should not have done that. <laughs> that <spell>. <laughs> what the mirror image? <laughs> yeah. Are you are you really going to try and have a conversation from all the way over there? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> okay. She gets up and circles around the desk. 
Artie is aiming his arm at her. It doesn't look like anything but an arm, but he's like, stay back. She, Ar- she looks at Artie and goes, could you please put that down? Artie, I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh no. Oh shit. That's how it's gonna be. That's not yeah. gonna be. Why'd I roll two? Don't know. They got 17 the first one. Take the so, first yeah. one, yeah. Yeah, 17. Okay, 17 just barely makes it. You start you start to feel this like unreasonable affection for her, like this is your best friend in the entire world. Why are you pointing a cannon at her? You manage to shake it off, but for a second there, like the cannon dips. Fuck you. You can't mind melt me. I am my own mind. <laughs> I'm sh- I'm sure that was intended to be much more eloquent than it was. So what? What what was what was the plan here? You take over the entire council for what? To take control of the city, of course. For who? Well, for myself and Your you know, for, for the one that I serve, ultimately. Are you part of the world eater? Is this is this is this part of that whole shtick? Oh, so you've heard about it. That's interesting. And you're not answering my question. Oh, well, no, let me answer your question. Yes, I serve the World Eater. So now we kill her, right? No, now we so, kill her? No, no, this doesn't make sense. What's the point? If, if, if it just devours systems, why even bother infiltrating the infrastructure of it? Well, that's not the... The ultimate goal is, of course, that undeath is the natural state of life in the universe. It's the only thing that can survive anywhere in the universe. The universe is a very hostile place, you realize. On death, the goal is on death for everyone. The goal is immortality. And to gain that goal, sometimes obliterating an entire planet isn't necessarily the thing you want to do. Sometimes it's important to take control of certain things first. An invasion is a very expensive thing to do, even for an army that does not have conventional supply lines or needs. I've seen undead. You can't fuck an undead. That's gross. <laughs> No, I've seen some pretty attractive ghosts in my time. And how fair first. No, but they keep sending skeletons and zombies. Yeah, those aren't as fuckable. You're right, Artie. I agree with you. <laughs> I've seen some fuckable skeletons. That's that's your main point of contention with what the world eater is trying to accomplish. <laughs> that, is mean, that zombies no. and skeletons aren't fuckable. <laughs> no, I mean, I have other qualms with it. I'm just talking about Artie's particular qualm. I don't want to be undead. I won't be fuckable then. But you'll live forever. Yeah, but I won't be fuckable. Uh, speaking, I want it, I want it, I want it, as an elf who is currently 347, you didn't ask, so I'm giving this freely. It's rude to ask otherwise. Uh, you know, immortality is kind of. Eh. You know, my father was very sick for the fastest past decade of his life. He was so very, very desperate to stave off the inevitable. And he failed, and he died very, very angry. And all that he had passed to me after all the work that I put in taking care of him and taking care of his affairs, while he struggled in vain against the thing that would ultimately claim him. And I vowed that I would never be like him. That just sounds like you're scared of death, love. Uh, I am. Aren't you? Nah. Uh, In the grand scheme of things, it's going to come. And that's okay. Otherwise, the world just stagnates. Do you think if I was scared of death, I would look like this? <laughs> he points to his nipples. Do you really want me to answer that question? I mean, listen, if this is the dead dad club, I'm in the dead dad club. But sometimes you eat the coyotes and eventually the coyotes eat you. <laughs> this is how it goes. Uh, Countess Tornacasa starts circling around the outside of the room. The whole time Artie has his arm aimed. I'm assuming those are windows down there. There are, yeah, there are windows against the southern and the western walls. Okay. All right, can I shoot her now? I just... When did this start? Who turned you? What... How did you even get into this? Was your father into this cult? What... How does this spread? Well, all a god really is, ultimately, is an idea. And ideas spread very, very easily. And I wonder... How far you've spread the world eater's influence just by knowing about him and traveling to the places you undoubtedly have. Juliana narrows her eyes. The idea is that death is negotiable. The idea is that it doesn't have to be the end. After that, all you have to do is wait for the right voice in your ear. And then do what it says. And you become like me. Oh, terrible fashion scene? Fuck that entirely. 
Hey, hey, stay back. <laughs> She's starting to edge a little closer to Alviva in particular. Oh, what? No. Go away. Listen, Jill. Jill? I only got one minute. Do you really want me to go away, Elviv? I need you to roll a wisdom saving throw. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so wise, right? <laughs> I don't know. Let's find out. I feel like you're about as wise as Zardy. Oh, no. Ooh. That's a critical fail, my friends. That uh, Viva, a-, a lot of what she's saying makes an awful lot of sense. She's, this is really... This is maybe your closest friend in the entire world. Sometimes you just meet people and you just know that they have your best interests at heart. This is your best friend in the entire world. I mean, listen, guys, if you consider maybe there's something to it. Mm, no. 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 It does suck to die. Cacophony, break it her, been, already go! Uh, nice. C- Cacophony reaches out and slaps Salviva on the face. <laughs> I heard already go. Yes. <laughs> Is Artie firing? Artie fires. Why does it keep yes. going two? Don't worry about it. 23, Just take the first one. 23 hits. 23 Roll hits. damage. 36 bludgeoning. 36! Hell yeah! 36 damage. Okay. Uh, it, I believe that's magical because it's created by magical weapons. So. Yes. That okay. is what we ruled last time. Okay, everybody roll Toolbox. initiative. You're in combat. Uh, is Grack in here or no? Uh, Grack is here. Let me let me pull Grack onto right. onto the ta- onto the. You could field. have done like a narrative thing where they're like, oh, "We'll stay down here." <laughs> no, I, I no, calibrated no. this for the fact that Grack would be here. Yeah, <laughs> no, give us the extra as warlock. many as much combat as possible. Kill the vampire, please, please, please. Send up the turtle, <laughs> the toidle, toidle. I'm so glad I got to do <laughs> the monologue thing. That was fun. <laughs> and also. <laughs> <laughs> she managed to circle around close enough to charm somebody. I'm yeah. so pleased. <laughs> Look, we're we're not used to we're not used to interacting with villains. <laughs> we are not wise folk. <laughs> As made evidence by our wisdom checks. I mean your wisdom checks. Is wisdom an important okay. stat for a ranger? Yes. Does that mean mine is good? No. Well, I mean you would have been okay, but you're rolling that one. Yeah. Artie's usually just too stupid to be coerced. Okay. I think that's everybody on, uh, I've got Cacophony, Jill, Lucrezia, Elviva, Countess Ogler, Natalia, Trinos, Grack. Am I missing anybody? Uh, looks like everyone's present and accounted for. And I see that layer action is still there. Yes, don't worry about it. <laughs> I, I hate that layer action. Don't care for it. <laughs> All right, uh, up next is Lucrezia, who, after taking a cannon to the face, is going to barge right up into Artie's space uh, and is going to uh, strike with her sword. All right, he's going to parry if that hits. That's a 13. I don't think that hits. It does not. She does get two, though. That's a 22. That hits. So he's going to use a superiority die. So whatever damage she causes is reduced by eight. Now, the first one was a one. It said it rolled two again. I don't know why it's rolling two for you. Wait, oh yeah. I don't I also don't know why. We'll just ignore the second one, it's fine. Okay, so you take uh five slashing damage, uh, and ten poison damage, and you need to make a constitution saving throw. Constitution oh, sorry, it's fi- five slashing and make a constitution saving throw, and whether you succeed or fail dep- will determine how much poison damage you take. And that's a ten constitution save. That does not do it. So yeah, five slashing, ten poison, fifteen total. And that's with the the reduce of one, or yeah, yeah, reduce by one, so fourteen total. Okay. And that's Lucrezia's turn. So up next is Cacophony. Uh, she's slapping Alviva to get that charm out of the way. <laughs> that's your action. Uh, I will focus my action on that if I have to. I still have bonus action. Technically, she did call that that before. I did call we, it before we rolled initiative. You did, you did call that. Okay, yeah. so that your action is slapping Alviva. Well, that bef- bef- that was my thing before I already even shot, so I don't know if that counts. <laughs> if you want to do something else on your turn, you can. Okay, in that case, uh, she will step down, step around, uh, da, 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 and step on this side. Uh, Which side? Uh, I moved. Yeah, no, tell, tell the, the audience. audience. Tell the audience oh, where sorry. you're going. Uh, she ducked down, uh, ran along the wall, and then ducked up behind Lucrezia, and she's got her rapier out, so she yoinks it back and then tries to slam it into her with advantage, because I'm across the party. 
23 hit? Uh, 23 does hit. Okay. A sneak attack for 19. Okay, 19. And then I will uh, bonus action uh, to do my um, Master of Tactics. Actually, I'm on a bonus action. Uh, who's next, Artie? No, okay. So never mind. I want to stay where I am. Okay. I'm going to bonus action instead to Master of Tactics, Jill. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying, okay, Jill, me and Audio are across from each other, so we can try to to try to hit her that way. Uh, if what you can do is focus instead on your um, blooky blooky sunlight, that would be great. Uh, and that I means I don't uh, have that. Okay, well that's okay. Do what you need to uh, do. The closest thing you can do to like sunlight damage. So your holy damage that would be wonderful. Yeah. I, no, I, I like I I can I have one spell that can do sunlight damage. I use that slot on Artie. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, use your use your holy damage, Jill. Yeah. Uh, and so you'll get advantage on that. Advantage whatever on whatever you do. On whatever you do. Damage. Yeah. So if you use guiding bolt, you'll get advantage, basically. Okay. So uh, is that your turn, Cacophony? That's my turn. Okay, at the end of your turn, uh, Count of Storm and Castle is going to use a legendary action and zip away from you guys. Sounds fine. Not provoking any attacks of opportunity. That's okay. That's the least terrifying thing she can do with a legendary action. Let's just warm up. <laughs> How long do you think that that conversation was? Uh, that conversation was maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Let's say thirty seconds. <laughs> let's say no. Let's say a minute. Why? Why, why, no. why do you want it? Why do you want to kill my mirror image? <laughs> that is true. You do have mirror image. Why'd you do that? I told you not to. Because <laughs> it helps me not get killed. Okay. On initiative count twenty, um, Arturos and Cacophony, you see some movement in the ceiling up above you, and you look up just in time to see some swarms of poisonous snakes drop down on top of you. <laughs> For that. fuck's sake! <laughs> So you're not being swarmed by snakes. That's okay. (laughs) The layer action is sealing snakes. (laughs) The layer layer action is snakes. It's snakes. Why? (laughs) (laughs) Why sealing snakes? (laughs) Why not sealing snakes? Uh, And it is now the snakes' turn. The snakes take a turn. Arturos, you're being swarmed by snakes. It won't be the first time, and it probably won't be the last does a 19 hit your AC? <laughs> yes. Okay, so you take 12 piercing damage, uh, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. That's 22. That's a success, so you only take 9 poison damage. That, so that's 9 more damage? Yes. God, I hate math. <laughs> if you go onto uh, the roll 20 thing and you use those little, uh, those little bubbles that pop up when you select your character, the red one is your hit points and you can just hit minus and then a certain number. Holy shit! Huzzah. I'm sorry, is this, is this is this witch magic? Did you, you guys not know about this? We no, didn't know! doing math this whole time! I knew about it! <laughs> I've been doing math this whole time? <laughs> we didn't have to do math? Nope. Yeah, you just hit minus a Sorry. certain number and then enter, and then it, it I mean, automatically damn it, because deducts you could by that told amount. Me I didn't have to do math. I just assumed you knew. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that I was struggling with math every single time. Oh my god. Okay, okay. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> okay, and Cacophony, you were also being attacked by snakes. Yeah. Uh, so that's a 12. I don't think that hits your AC. That does not hit me, no. Okay, you were still swarmed by snakes. <laughs> eh. Okay, up next is Arturos. You are swarmed by snakes. Alright, I'm guessing I can't do much without- Well, you can you can move while you're being swarmed by snakes. I can? Yeah, you- the, the swarm just means that you're, like, it's occupying the same space as you. Why can't I be faster? <laughs> Alright. Well, be like me, take the mobile feet. <laughs> Isn't that just in range? Can't you get diagonal from her? Or is yeah, that I think still a squirrel? I think you, yeah, yeah, I think you have exactly- I have- no, she's 35 feet. I have 30. Yeah, but I think with 30, that gets you diagonal yeah. to her. Okay. Yeah, it does. It gets you right. to, to a spot diagonal to her. You do have to run over the rug, so if it's a trap, this is what we'll find out. <laughs> this, Use your jumpy boots. <laughs> if this is a trap. Use your jumpy boots and maybe you can shake off some of the snakes. <laughs> <laughs> you can shake off the snakes just by running out of the snakes. Yeah, uh, Artie's gonna run out of the snakes. Um, do, a, do a sick flip. Over the carpet. Okay. And run up to Tornikaza. Okay. You think this is the first time I've had snakes in my face? <laughs> and, yeah, no, he just attacks her with his glaive. 
Okay. Uh, the first attack is 18. 18 hits? So that's 15 slashing. Oh, God. 13 yeah. radiant. Nice. Nice. It, this is obviously, like, actually affecting, unlike the last time we, we fought vampires. Oh, shit. This is good. That's not the correct weapon. <laughs> and an oh, would have been a crit, been though. Nice, though. Oh, that would have been a crit, though. No, um, I hit Blave, and that's a 26. 26 hits. So, 15 slashing, 7 radiant. And Artie's... Artie's done. Artie's... Okay. Artie's just been hit by snakes. He's done with this. <laughs> He's gonna do an action search. Yeah. And hit her two more times. Yeah. So, it's a 17 and a 23. Oh, shit! Yes, those hit. So that's... Oh, 27. God. 27. And... And 20. And 20. Oh, boy! You can't keep hitting me with snakes! And that's his turn. Hang on. I lost track. I lost track of the numbers I'm punching in. There we go! <laughs> okay, that's your turn? That's his turn. Okay, at the end of your turn, uh, she's going to take a legendary action to uh, hit you with her sword back. That is a 16. I think that just hits your AC. That just hits, yeah. Okay, you take six, six slashing damage and I need a constitution saving throw. Constitution saving throw, that's a nine. Ugh. Okay, that is a failure and I gotta roll the thing because I didn't do it probably. It's 11 poison damage. Ugh. How you holding up, Artie? For the first time in a, in a while, Artie kind of looks pale. Ooh. Yeah, Lucrezia on the other hand is reeling from all those attacks and you hear her call into the next room Captain I could use your assistance Ah dang Aww. it Okay it is Greg's turn Oh shit it's also me uh, There's a lot of snakes <laughs> I don't have any snakes No Greg does not have snakes Yeah there are no snakes on Greg but there are snakes in the room There and are he snakes does have a gun. in the room Yeah Artie's just gonna Are you gonna... sick of these fucking snakes on this motherfucking <laughs> office <laughs> I am. Hey, we lasted. We lasted a long time before making that joke. Good job. <laughs> we did. Good for us. Uh, Artie's just gonna move up a scotch Grack. to Grack get is a the one's moving. <laughs> Sorry, you are Grack now. You have switched penguins. I have switched penguins. Become penguin. You have switched aquatic animal people. I am become Pemwim. 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 I am Pemwim. I'm just making sure that I have correct range. Yeah, are you just. No, not Artie. God damn it! Grack! <laughs> Grack! I am Grack. Grack is me. We are Grack. What is Grack doing? Grack is sending out oh, two witch bolts to Tornikaza. Okay. Because magic. So the first is a 20. 20 hits? What? Cast at level. Cantrip. No. Yes. No, Hold wait, on. if you're a warlock, it you're using can't warlock. be cantrip. You I was thinking of Eldritch, Eldritch Blast, Blast. two different spells. Hold on. Hey, you know what? This is the boss. Let's let's do it. <laughs> okay. We're just gonna do the witch bolt and cast it at level 2. What do you mean that's 3 lightning? Wait. <laughs> no, you're not. You didn't cast it up. Up cast it. Uh, so you'd want to roll another d12. I don't fucking know how to play a wizard. How many? How you're, many... you're a warlock, so you're, all your spells that are not cantrips cast automatically at level five. Okay. What? Yeah. So... Wait. Ca yeah. Oh. What, what? At level, level five. What's your highest level spell slot? Five. Okay. Then you need to cast five witch bolts. <laughs> so it's four d twelve. That's four d twelve. Okay. Yes. Four d twelve on top fifth. of the three you already rolled. Yeah. You have fifth level spells. Uh, I, it's. Well, he he is only a warlock. Uh, only a warlock. That old multi-class. That's yeah. uh, 25. Okay. Yeah, plus that 3, so that's 28 total. Lightning damage. Mwah, love it. <laughs> Oof, yeah, she's looking really bad, guys. Good. Good. I think that might be the only thing I can do, except throw a magic stone! <laughs> the only <laughs> thing Grat can do is do 28 <laughs> lightning damage. Yeah, oh, Witch Bolt has a range of 30 feet. You need to be closer. Okay. Yeah, and that's... Range on Magic Stone, I believe, is also 30 feet. So, it's also yeah, 30 roll feet. roll it. Okay. So I guess Witch Bolt, if, if she doesn't move out of range, then next turn you can just do it again for free. Uh... uh... It says on your turn, you can use your action to deal 
Yeah, you can use your we'll action save. to... You, basically, you've got a great big lightning lasso around her, and you can use it to deal lightning damage to you every turn. To her every turn. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. He throws a stone. It's an eight. <laughs> well, it it's 27 to hit, and eight damage. Okay. It turns into one of those um, paperweights. Like a stone Oof. paperweight? A glass one? One of those glass paperweights. Ow. Fancy. <laughs> those hurt. They do. It's got like a terrible snowman inside. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is Grax's turn. Uh, up next, we've got Jill. Uh, I am going to, uh, I guess, leave the attack, leave the leave the area of attack of these snakes, these two snake piles. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's see. I am going to move thirty feet. Uh, down sort of parallel to where everybody else is, so I'm still, like, a distance from her, but I've got her more in my line of sight. Uh, so Juliana crosses the room, crosses over the threatening rug. <laughs> don't worry about it. They, they definitely don't worry about it. Rug, and I am gonna go with a, uh, I'm, I'm gonna pump in a fourth level guiding bolt because Cacophony lets me do that with advantage. <laughs> You're welcome, babe. Oh, does a 17 hit? 17 just hits. Oh Ooh. my god. And fourth level and... Thank Ethla. That is uh, 15 radiant 21 damage. radiant damage. 21? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 21 okay. radiant damage. Very well played. <laughs> and then she's also glowing, so the next strike on her has advantage. Yeah, next attack against her has advantage. Okay, uh, if that's Jill's turn, up next we have Alviva. So the charm is broken? No. Oh, oh no. <laughs> No. They're really concerned that everyone is attacking your best friend. You think you need to protect her. Okay. Hmm. Much for all of my plans. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's alright. How would I go about protecting her? It's a strong charm. This is the main thing vampires do. Yeah, no, valid. Now, think like... Think like a himbo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, my first thought in terms of, like, oh shit, we're outnumbered, I need to protect her, I need one of my protecting animal friends. You <laughs> <laughs> are not charmed, by the way. <laughs> yeah, though I tell them what to, to do. Alviva. That's true. Yeah, I so I, I grab my ball, a ball, a pokeball from my bag, and I throw it out, and I say, protect the vampire lady! And who's our my friend, new best friend. Who's our friend today? It is an owl. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not the giant boar. Oh, no. shoot. What was the name of the owl? Oh, I don't have my name list handy. Albert? No. No, no I think it was like... It, it wasn't like Athena's. Was it... What was the name of the it's owl in, in, in Sword in the Stone? Was it that one? Archimedes? It might have been, what's the name of the owl in Clash of the Titans? I don't know. It might be not Bufo. Bufo's toads. It's similar. I don't know. It's fine. It's She's an charmed. owl. The the main point though is that the owl I think is like, uh, how am I supposed to do that? <laughs> <laughs> Who did? I, I guess maybe like Pex at Artie. <laughs> Rude. Yeah, let me look up owl. I know. I gotta put an owl on the field. Thank you. Uh, owl. Owl's coming for Artie with the talons. Oh, not the talents. Yeah. Keeps giving me owl bears instead of owls. I just want an owl. Here we go. Very small owl bear. Oh, dang, that is a 22 to hit you already. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> owl just shrugs its shoulders. Hoot hoot. Hoot <laughs> hoot. Yeah, I know this is gonna hurt to hear, but you take uh, one damage. I don't even roll it. It's just a two one. <laughs> just take a damage. The owl is flanking the Countess Torrancaza. Nice advantage. Cool, so that's my action, and then I guess I will move probably in front of... I guess I'll just move. In the middle of this In the, the middle of the rug. And I'll, I'll, I'll call for everybody to stop it. We need to talk. I think that we actually can work this out. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> Just stop for a sec. Alviva, no, what the Alviva. fuck? For the record, when I charm people, if you slap them, they come out of it, so I don't know how to fix this one. <laughs> it requires a fifth level spell. <laughs> I don't want to get nasty about this, but you can't you can't stab. 
this lovely, lovely lady. I mean, uh, on a scale of one to ten, uh... Speaking of which, we do need to figure out where her coffin is! Okay, those are all of my actions. Perhaps one of the coffins downstairs. One can hope. Okay, so, uh, that's Elviva's turn. Up next is Countess Aguilar, who's kind of shaking her head at what happened to Elviva. Does not have any spells for this. Uh, and she is going to, uh, move up slightly, and then she's going to cast Armor of Agathis on herself. Good call. Uh, and that is her turn. Uh, up next is Natalia, who's also going to, uh, move up, uh, sort of in the center of everybody. And then, uh, she is going to start glowing. Hell yeah. I think it's ten feet. It's been a while since I played Natalia. I don't remember how her homebrew bullshit works. <laughs> That's what you get for homebrewing some bullshit. You know, I wonder if I wrote it down. Okay, yes. That's the aura of it. It's, there's sunlight in that ten in that ten foot radius circle. You just gotta check whether that's an action or a bonus. I think it's an action. Oh, it's a bonus action. So she can't actually cast a spell. So she's going to uh Ray of Frost, uh, Countess Aguilar. Slow her down. That's a natural one. <laughs> oh, bad day for her. Uh, and Countess Tornacasa, uh, at the end of Natalia's turn, is going to use her last legendary action uh, to attack Artie. Oh, fuck. That's a dirty 20. Ugh. Oh, fuck. Yes. Okay, this time she does not do damage, you are grappled. Uh-oh. And it is now Countess Tornacasa's turn, and she is going to bite Artie. Oh, oh no. Oof, that's a natural 20. <laughs> Oh, no! So, Artie, oh. um, you take 11 piercing. Okay. You take 24 necrotic, and your maximum hit points are reduced by 24. Yeah, this bullshit. Oh, Artie looks bad. <laughs> Artie looks super hella bad. This is a strong charm, but it doesn't break Alphima's charm to watch an app squat get turned into a snack. Snack squat! You don't necessarily you don't necessarily feel the need to attack your friends at this point, but you still think that Countess Tornacasa needs to be protected. You don't think everyone should be fighting her. Yeah. Uh, and then she has two attacks, so she's gonna go in for the long sword on Artie. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's a 28. <laughs> yeah, Artie just goes down. Okay. Do you kill Artie? Is this where you uh, kill Artie? Is, Artie, Artie, Artie is, is now down. unconscious. He's not dead, he's just unconscious. Everyone stop fighting. This doesn't have to happen. Just stop fighting. Gem Jammer is performed by Alexi Peppers, Annie Creighton, Kit Walker, Mackenzie Weaver, and Rio, and is edited by Jake Mason. Our character designs are by Rio, who you can find at vriosart on Twitter, and our cover art is by Canary Witch, who you can find at doodlesfromthebird.tumblr.com. Our opening and closing music is by Reckoning Storm Audio Works. For more episodes of this show and our other shows, as well as news, check out our website at crookedrussiancamp.horse. Then, I want to call a quick pee break. Okay. PRB. <laughs> quick pee break. Okay. I cast quick, quick pee break. Quick bio break. <laughs> Actually, right, good call. I'm gonna this, go this fight may take a while. It's a yes. big boss fight. Everybody hydrate. Uh -huh. Everybody Never gonna give cast you hydrate. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run Sorry, Jay. I'll do my best to keep you entertained while everyone's taking a break.